These revelations and embodiments of this new level of light have greatly amplified the human heart grid. Blessings upon everyone, exploring all that is available on a personal level and taking on these embodiments with grace. July brought us an expansion of what was revealed in June, and it is anticipated to become more and more intense in a good way always in a good way. Take advantage of these waves as they dissolve the personal and planetary boundaries on our perception. The more humans fully realizing their personal ascension into higher states of Christed consciousness, the brighter the human grid becomes. It is our unification with the crystalline grid and our higher levels, the bridging heaven to earth scenario. We have a tremendous effect on the collective consciousness. As the new sphere reflects this to Gaia, she will adjust accordingly. All is well. Timeline splicing. If you work with timelines, you may have learned to cut entire sections of your personal ascension timeline in order to shorten the perceived distance between key events. Many of us, not all, created this ascension experience in the future, then went back in time to play it out and assist during the shift in consciousness. I am one of those beings, and as I became aware of the flexibility of personal timeline choices, I decided to cut and paste the point on the timeline when the future self and the current embodiment cross paths. In my personal journey, I could see the moment when my future self met my current self so I shortened the timeline when I would run into myself. The new light triggers the opportunity. However, the intention of let's do this now was accelerated by trimming the timeline. Please note, splicing timelines also means that everything which was to be learned, karmic contracts, and service work are sped up to accommodate the intention. Your lessons and soul contracts unfold in a shorter amount of linear time, which can be challenging. Kind while, I ran right into myself. I have met a few selves, star aspects, formerly external Pleiadians, divine Christed template aspects, divine will presented first, higher selves in fifth and sixth dimensional expressions, and ascended master aspects, that formerly projected as external masters. It is a dreamy affair to encounter oneself in the physical. I hope everyone is comprehending this step properly. We have a telepathic communion occurring with a visual projection, a holographic projection of our higher selves or higher dimensional beings right in front of us. It adds a new layer to the first contact scenario and I feel many of us are beginning to understand what that is truly about. It is best to be in know-nothing mode when aspects of the self present. Ask questions until you attain this co-creation level. Our skills as recreators, more of the same dynamics, beliefs, thoughts, etc., can override and block new information. Open up. Be not afraid of what you truly are or what you thought you were. It was a crazy, brilliant game we were playing. No judgment if you scrambled some of the self-intel. Technically, you agreed to a creation. Now you get to uncreate it instantly if you desire effortless surrender of those creations. There is a deep connection to Source through these new conversations with self. The divine fractal is so clear the microcosm of my experience, which reflects Source's experience of discussing itself with itself. It is profound for me, and I will share some of those conversations soon. Some exchanges are difficult to recreate in writing, so I am exploring how to relay the feeling, the communion aspect, without belittling the experience. The Romance of Self my goodness, this divine reunion feels incredibly romantic. 
I am enamored with the divine metaphor of all that we have been, all that we are, and what we are becoming in this now moment. As the veils drop on the old experience, I am awash in the true light of the true self. That love extends to all of creation, and the sense of self as universe takes on another level. Everything takes on a heightened state of divine love as we dissolve the philosophies and mind-level understanding of what was and finally embody the truth of those old paradigm prophecies. For those not experiencing the new level of divine love on this planet, imagine all the times that you have been deeply, blissfully in love and magnify it a thousandfold. It washes away all of the illusion of distortion. There is nothing here but true love. Humanity is catching on to the truth, and the unity grid is building strength exponentially each moment. Do not be distracted by the lower consciousness projections of what they think reality is. Ignore it completely. The Revelation of Experience some revelations are humorous, some challenging, all of them brilliant. I have always held a deep appreciation for what is happening to us, and I feel that is key to flowing with the new light. The higher realms have been focusing on the experience of revelation, reminding me that every sensation, every moment is to be shared with all levels of the self. In the old paradigm, it seemed our higher levels felt our experience. Our vibrational mismatch did not allow for the richness of our experience to be shared. Now that the great merge of self is occurring and the vibration of the planet is completely changed, I am reminded that the sensations of our embodiment, every experience, feeling, observation, has value to the higher realms as we reconnect and create a new expression. Share your experiences, beloveds. These are precious moments of reunion we have been working for. It truly assists the merge to share what you see, feel, and experience as the merge unfolds. The Revelation of Unique Expression There is a lot coming in on this subject of revelation which is why I am attempting to be thorough and ease into what is happening here. Our unique experience, our unique expression, is very important as we fully realize unity consciousness. Let us remember that unity consciousness is not about being assimilated into a big source blob. In the old light, we spread rumors of oneness based on giving up our identity, surrender, and beliefs about the human experience. We had to grow through that phase as part of our ascension process. As these revelation passages open up over the next few months, we are capable of understanding higher level intelligence. We move out of that old paradigm religion of the new age and into the next, the new, the now of what is being revealed. Oneness is not a faceless, nameless state. The union at heart level honors the billions of individual expressions of human on this planet, and all journeys are encouraged to explore their unique facet of creative intelligence after we drop the lower level domination of the old paradigm self. That's ego, emotion, mind, karma. This is why a state of non-judgment is vital to achieving the merge. We uncreate the religious beliefs that includes New Age thought when we actively pursue the now. No more past life obsession. No fear or anxiety about the future. No need for drama as motivation programs that so many have depended on. Freedom has arrived, not through the escapism of brief out-of-body journeys, but through the merging of denser physical embodiment with higher aspects of self. Embodiment is unique to each expression of source in form, 
and clarity comes after we master the surrender of what was. No more drone-like behavior, no more collective belief systems that do not serve the new light. Each of us will bring our unique skills, creativity, and purpose through this merge. The truest characteristics of self will make the shift into this creative era. We are merging with an ascended Gaia designed to support a golden race of pure creator incarnate, a divine embodiment which encompasses a boundless amount of consistent creativity. As we merge with our divine aspects and multidimensional self, we will realize our uniqueness with the dream of self as universe. For the moment, know there is comfort in these revelations. It forces us to honor our own creation and learn to be sovereign in our new creation of self. All of us will have our aha moments, a good laugh at what we believed, and smile at who played what role in body in the higher realms. It is brilliant, and the metaphors within the dream of ascension are plentiful. Revelation of the New Creation Beyond the reunification of mastery realms, star family, finer expressions, and our grounded physical selves, there is the new light which brings new creation. The summary of my experiences here lost any power when I hit this phase. I understand that many will be preoccupied with what role they played along the way to ascension. I humbly suggest getting over the past life connections quickly and any attachment to the roles of your multidimensional beingness. It is spiritual ego that desires a past or a present title to cling to as truth. I understand it can be comforting when one is in the dark to hold up a torch of what was to light your path, but that is not the now, and recreating what was is old paradigm. The unknown new is brighter than anything which has occurred here so far. The Divine Recalibrations You may have noticed some significant changes occurring during the last few gateways in your personal journey. Everything is so very different from our old experience, and I hope the last few articles assisted with understanding the linear aspect of these unfoldments. Some of you may have experienced physical recalibrations during these last revelation gates, which will continue for a few months. These are opportunities to willingly, consciously perceive what is your personal expression's true path, true purpose, and in many cases your true multidimensional self. It takes conscious engagement to experience the movement toward the new self. It is new, and I am sure many of you are having these sequences of everything has changed, I am a different person now. It seems to advance with every gateway. Be sure to integrate properly. It is your free will choice to default to old self-behavior out of fear or out of habit. The three days in the cave scenario. In my personal journey, I have had three very intense days on the mountain during the last gateway. I could barely move. What makes these readjustments different than achy days of the past is that they occur within a veil-lifting scenario. For three days, I lay in my screened-in tent on the mountain, which provides a full view of the forest, skies, animals, and activity around me. Physically, it felt like my nerves were getting stretched. My bones and joints were in terrible pain. Spiritually, my team was close and curious. When I slept, I was completely gone. When I was awake, I had a Pleiadian shaman working around me, and the kingdoms were actively assisting him. Pleiadians are responsible for stepping into the native tribes, the aboriginals, and the Americas, etc., to bridge the solar cosmic Christ consciousness into the planetary grids, so you can imagine what a cosmic shaman straight from the stars would feel like. 
I was happy to experience him despite the whirl of pain and dimensional flux because I had precogged three of my contacts last March and he was the last one to appear. The first was an old friend from the Pleiades, the second my twin Ray, who is not incarnated in this lifetime. That sequence is complete now, and I sense that the next gateway, which is July 25th through the 27th, will be very powerful. As with any of these new experiences, I flow with it even when the body is knocked out. I slept for hours on end, managed to rise for water, and would go right back to horizontal. Back in May, during my three-week recalibration, Yeshua shared the cave intelligence with me. There are passages which must be spent alone where the body will be actively igniting new meridians and new DNA will take hold within the crystalline templates in our cellular structure itself. In the old light, it was a three-day rework prior to emerging in a new form. In the new light, we have an ascending tribe choosing to take the body along for the experience and a completely different energy and collective to work within. None of us is sequestered in a mystery school in the Himalayas. We're ascending in full view of the collective. And this means on occasion we will have days of private time or hours when divine recalibration will hold our attention and our bodies in a cave-like state for upgrades. When these moments arrive, and sometimes you may not make it to a comfortable position before they hit, it is best to honor it and enjoy the experience. There will be several of these new light recalibrations as we go through our process. Unlike the physical resets of the past, these are a response to templates activating within the planet designed for a best-case scenario of our ascension timelines. More on that very soon. The cave scenario is powerful as our body consciousness changes to accommodate the demands of our ascension. Old Light versus New Light There is absolutely no judgment on what was created in the Old Light. That goes for both good intentions and less than the highest interest intentions. Many of the metaphors, symbols, beings, stories, and myths of our past were presented in a certain way because we were in density and did not understand how higher light functioned. Because we could not comprehend vast multidimensional operations, we were presented with metaphors. The Essenes offered archangels, Melchizedek offered brotherhoods of light, the masters offered magi and miracles. Channels were presented with material in ways we could understand. Beings that had certain responsibilities, karma and chakra structures, colors and rays, geometries of ancient texts, hidden cities operating on higher knowledge, Akashic tales of past lives. Some of it is still applicable. Some of it is not. It depends on your level of consciousness as to what serves your awakening and what inhibits your understanding of the new light. Now that we are perceiving the truth of these metaphors, we can apply our new perspective to everything in a state of divine neutrality. Do you feel the difference this is making as we move through these revelation gateways? Those who freely, quickly assimilate the knowledge without judgment of the self or the external are raising the vibration for the collective. We are dissolving a lot of turmoil in the old New Age collective by greeting these new light revelations with neutrality. Neutrality is non-judgment. Divine neutrality is the absence of any attachment to payback, finger-pointing, told you so, or they will get theirs intentions. Honestly, it does not matter how folks were presenting material for understanding. It does not make anything that I have mentioned previously wrong. Much of it is still assisting us in our expansion, and much of it is still true to our experience here. 
we collectively create so many wonderful things. It is our divine right to uncreate, renew, recalibrate our truths to align with the new light. Understand that making things right or wrong is old light, old energy and duality. As we recalibrate ourselves to the new light, the past dissolves. Divine forgiveness holds on to nothing, poof, gone, brand new for the now moment. What matters now is letting go of the old stories that do not match our recalibrated consciousness so we may move into higher and higher new light, creating what applies to the here and now. It is not deceptive to believe in something which looked true in the old light. However, it is deceptive to know better and continue to do it anyway. I am sure you feel our point here. Revelations work on a personal level as well as collective. The sooner we surrender attachment to old beliefs, the sooner we get on with larger collective shifts. This is why we do not have a sudden veil lifting for all point on this timeline. It gives everyone the opportunity to change, to surrender, to explore what they need to explore, to reveal or to be revealed. A word on free will. As we move into fully understanding free will principles and responsible creation, we continually keep the spiritual ego in check until it learns to behave just as the egoic level had to learn. Many continue the old light game of attack, the unsolicited comment, advice, guidance given to another without their consent. Some are unaware of how that violates free will. Some with undeveloped intuition can blatantly mistake the mind for higher guidance. Those are beginner phases of awakening, but in the ascended tribe we must take a look at free will principles since we desire the accelerated journey and do not want to play in duality or the karmic realms any longer. Our skills are greatly enhanced as we embody the creator state of consciousness. We see a wide open palette of creation to choose from. Our limitlessness is revealed beyond the veils and we are inspired to go new, new, new. We want experiences in this new light and desire recreation of our lives, our services. We want everything to align with the new light. We must also understand how influential our new creations will be when they are in alignment with this new light. This can make one cautious about creation. Since so much is in flux as our perception attunes to this new light. My highest guidance on creating right now is to relish the experience of creating. Really enjoy a lengthy exploration of all that your creation can encompass as you manifest. You will feel the freedom in that experience and it is and can be a relief after so much busyness in the last decade to get us to this point. Beware of being a light workaholic. There is a great shift in planetary and personal energy systems right now. You might notice that old ceremonies feel old. Rituals demand upgrades. We are compelled to mix it up, shift our days and activities so we don't recreate yesterday. This is a passage of personal revelations that change everything from the heart out. Honor it. Breathe it in. Calm the worthiness issues, the judgment of self, Step away from the needy or the need to be needed for just a while. This passage works on a deeply personal level. Since you have been and will always be infinitely you, give yourself the private time you deserve to get acquainted with the true self. <laughs>